Hello and welcome to the Choppable Tree Setup Tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to set up choppable trees in a fresh third person template project. There's like one catch we have to go through because Unreal Engine does not automatically import resource trace channels, which it should, but it doesn't. So we just got to add that among one other thing and it's not that difficult, but it is something I feel that should automatically be taken care of. Anyway, let's do that. Okay, first things first. If this is a fresh project, it's gonna be easier just to go into your world settings, find your game mode, and inside of our choppable trees, third person blueprints, we have this character. I'm just gonna hit F2 and add underscore axe to the end so we can tell that it's different from our default pawn class you can just drag and drop this here but also go down here and select that so that's our first thing our second step is to go into choppable trees into blueprints we want to drag and drop sliceable tree into the map position it hit place so that we can see it there's nothing there so we got to add the meshes so open up sliceable trees if you go into our our shader data static mesh actually what we do is here inside of details we have these two variables here we want to go into demo tree meshes drag and drop our trunk drag and drop our branches and there we go. If you're making a custom tree, you will want to separate the trunk from the branches and you can do that in a third party modeling app. It's highly recommended that you keep them separate for this project. Makes life easier. Otherwise you're gonna have to customize things. Okay, so we got that. I'm just gonna hit play so we can see it. Uh, let's go back into world settings. We got our character with the ax. Hit play. I don't know why he's not spawning the axe. That's fun. Okay, if you hit play and your character's not holding an axe, you probably added the wrong character. So make sure, because I just did that. I cannot believe I did that. So in demo, third person blueprints, not just this third person blueprints, add the axe name into there, drag and drop it over, hit play, and we can see we have the axe. If you try to chop the tree, it doesn't work because we need to set up the trace channel. It should, in my opinion, default to automatically picking that up from the asset pack, but the engine doesn't do that, so we have to do it ourselves. That is something they should update. If you're listening, Epic Games, update it so that if you import an asset pack to a project, it automatically detects trace channels, please. Okay, so in project settings, we go in here and we want to search for trace channel new trace channel, we're gonna call it uh, resource, and we want it to ignore as default, otherwise it will add to everything and block everything, which is not what we want. What we do want is our sliceable tree to block it, so in choppable trees, blueprint, sliceable tree, uh, go to your static tree mesh, go into collision presets under resource, change that to block, in our tree procedural mesh, do the same under collision presets to block. Now if we hit play, actually double check something first. In our axe 2 thing, make sure that these trace channels now say resource. They should because once we add that resource trace channel, it automatically was like, oh, this is what the original node said when you imported it, but we just didn't create that. So blah, 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 blah. cool. And if it doesn't say resource, make sure you select it. You might have to refresh nodes. All right, let's test that it works. All right, we have impact. Tree comes down, goes on here. If you want, you can change the collision settings so you can see that it's floating above the ground slightly. I just made the collider thicker so that if you have grass, you can actually see the tree, but you can adjust that. And that's this is the complex collision. It will drop down, which might make it hard to see for you guys. Um, yeah, and you see that we pick up our items, press I for inventory, it says we got 30. And that's how you set it up in a fresh third-person template project. Now, 
if you want to add it to a project that already exists all you really have to do is in your third person demo project you can see there are all these teal areas these are the areas that you'll want to update copy paste etc promote new variables to your custom character so we use uh, enhanced input mapping here so you'll want to have that set up it's not very difficult you can find some tutorials for that just make sure you create your axe blueprint variables your rotations and all that create your little functions for your server spawning you might be like hey why are we doing it this way where we spawn a new axe and delete the old one well the answer to that is that it's kind of a hacky workaround to be able to set the rotation of this axe in this viewport to whatever mesh and animations you're using and then you just have to hard code that into these variables actually what happened is you actually have to hard code them here which will be these axe start rotations here i ran into some weird things where if you try to send a rotator over the network it like alternates the order of things anyways I'm already rambling too much so that's all it takes to set up the project it's pretty easy it could be easier if it just didn't have that one trace channel thing so I'm gonna wait for Unreal Engine to update that that needs to be updated come on guys anyways thanks for checking out the project hopefully it helps you create some cool stuff in your survivor slash whatever type of game you're building it's this ended up taking me a lot more time than I expected to finish this project because at the end I found out the procedural meshes don't replicate so I had to do all this hacky stuff to make it work and it will save you so much time and so many headaches and yeah as always thanks for watching hope it helps and peace